In this video, I'll talk about how pyruvate and other molecules can be used to make glucose in a process called gluconeogenesis. Whereas glycolysis, the oxidation of glucose to pyruvate, takes place in all of our cells, gluconeogenesis takes place mainly in the liver. Liver cells make glucose through gluconeogenesis as a strategy to prevent blood glucose levels from dropping too low. Recall that when blood glucose falls, liver cells release glucose into the bloodstream from glycogen storage. The glucose made by liver cells through gluconeogenesis is also released into the bloodstream and becomes the main source of circulating glucose when liver glycogen stores are used up. Quite a few different compounds can be used to make glucose, including lactate, pyruvate, glycerol, citric acid cycle intermediates, and certain amino acids. But for simplicity, we will consider the pathway when pyruvate is the starting material. Making glucose from pyruvate can be thought of as the opposite process of glycolysis. So you may be wondering, how is it possible to make glucose from pyruvate? After all, we saw in the last video that oxidizing glucose to pyruvate is very energetically favorable. How is it possible for the reverse process of converting pyruvate to glucose to also be uh, energetically favorable? The answer is that gluconeogenesis is not simply the reverse of glycolysis, as we can see when we look at the net reaction of the pathway. We can see here that when two pyruvate molecules are converted to a glucose molecule, energy from hydrolysis of 4 ATP and 2 GTP is required. It is the energy from these six ATP equivalents that makes the process energetically favorable. And because gluconeogenesis is a reductive process, we need a source of electrons, and the electrons come from NADH. Now you should know this net reaction for the test. This diagram is a bit cluttered, but I want to use it to make the point that gluconeogenesis is not simply glycolysis in reverse. The reactions of glycolysis go from top to bottom, and the reactions of gluconeogenesis go from the bottom to the top. Uh, the enzymes that catalyze the three irreversible steps of glycolysis are on the left. And at the corresponding steps of gluconeogenesis, we need different enzymes to catalyze different reactions that are energetically favorable. In particular, note that the first two steps of gluconeogenesis require energy input to accomplish the conversion of pyruvate to phosphoenolpyruvate. The reversible reactions of gluconeogenesis and glycolysis are catalyzed by the same enzymes in each direction. For these reactions, which direction is favored depends on the relative concentration of metabolites. Recall that we saw a similar situation with glycogen synthesis and breakdown. Regulation of flux through gluconeogenesis is accomplished by regulation of these irreversible steps in the pathway. As an example, I'll talk about regulation of fructose bisphosphatase. This enzyme is inhibited by two compounds. Now, I mentioned fructose 2,6-bisphosphate in a previous video as a regulator of glycolysis. This compound increases in concentration when insulin is present in the bloodstream, indicating high blood glucose. Therefore, it makes sense that it inhibits an enzyme in gluconeogenesis, the whole point of which is to make glucose for release into the bloodstream. If blood glucose is already high, then there is no need to perform gluconeogenesis. AMP is an indicator of the energy status of the liver cell. Remember that gluconeogenesis is energetically costly, consuming six ATP equivalents per glucose made. A high concentration of AMP indicates that the liver cell is running out of ATP and is in danger of exhausting itself trying to provide glucose for the bloodstream. So when AMP is high, gluconeogenesis is inhibited to give the liver cell a chance to build up its own ATP supply. We can compare the regulation of this step of gluconeogenesis with the analogous step of glycolysis that converts fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. We can see that compounds that activate the enzyme that carries out the step in glycolysis will inhibit the enzyme that carries out the gluconeogenesis reaction. These enzymes will never both be turned on at the same time. If they were, that would be what biochemists call a futile cycle where two compounds are rapidly interconverted. That doesn't make any sense, 
So anytime you have this kind of situation, only one direction will be favored at any given time. In the next video, I'll briefly describe the pentose phosphate pathway.